What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we're speaking the language of romance. Hi. Hey, hey sweetie. Hi, pumpkin pie. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I don't remember. I, I don't remember how long ago we talked about this. And it was actually fairly recently. We were talking about going to Japan and being hostesses. Oh, yeah. So that was that was last week. It was last week. Last week we were talking about being going to Japan and being hostesses. Yeah, for the cake bar. Right. And so then it got me talking about the ninja bar, that there was a bar that you're served food and drink by ninjas. It's like an escape room, but it's all ninjas. Yeah. Okay, so I have so that got me thinking, Sean, what if we I've got I've got another job for us if we go if we go to Japan. So we can work the cake bar? During the day. We're cake bar during the day. What we do at night. So then at night, we could be ninjas. Like, I suggested this. I suggested this last week. And so I looked into it. Sean, I've got a story that's dated six days ago. <gasps> they heard our call. They did. In the future. Japan, <laughs> Japan is suffering from a ninja shortage. What? There is a... Are you sure it's just because they can't find them because they're ninjas and they hide? They're not like those dirty pirates who put it all on front street. <laughs> it's it's kind of like that. No, it's not. No, it's like, ah, oh, I'm a pirate. It's my turn in the barrel. Is the is the turn of the barrel thing for pirates? Is that a common thing or is that just something we made up? <laughs> that pirates get blowjobs and barrels. Yeah, don't you remember? So back in the day, when we played D and D. We always joked about whose turn it was in the barrel. It's pirates. You know, and they're out at sea. Because we had a barrel in the game room, and then you were like, what's the barrel for? <laughs> and they're like, hop in. <laughs> oh, it's you're always the... my turn in the barrel. <laughs> well, you're the new guy. Why do you think I brought you along? Because I was the new guy. <laughs> like, yeah, you're, you're the guy in the barrel until you bring a new guy. Right. And you never brought anybody. I mean, I was the I made me feel popular. Sis, sis, you gotta come play TNT with me, please. Please. <laughs> Everyone's like, yay, Sean's here. <laughs> oh, he brought somebody. Oh. <laughs> but is that a common thing? Like, is that a, or is that just a joke? I have no idea. I, I have, I have not, I have not looked into the history of glory holes. I don't think I could explain that search history. <laughs> well, because the joke is, so there's a pirate, a new pirate on a ship. And they're like, you know, we're out at sea for a long time. So, you know, if you need some satisfaction, because we're not in port, you know, much. Go over that barrel, put your wee wee in the hole, and like you'll have the, like the most satisfying feeling of all time. Of course, put he goes over. In the hole. He does it, and he puts his wee wee in the hole, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, this is the greatest feeling ever!" So he goes to the barrel all the time, right? All right. And all of a sudden, the captain comes up, he's like, "Hey, Fitzy McGee, come here!" And he's like, "Do do 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 do." He's like, "Well, I I don't I, don't, I already used the barrel today. I don't I don't really want to do it." He's like, "No, no, it's your turn." The barrel pops the lid. Pirate jumps out. And it's like, oh, there's dude pirates in there giving blowies. Well, yeah, because you can't have ladies on a boat. It's the albatross. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Is I always wonder if that's a common thing. Put a lady on your boat, then the boat sinks. Yeah, like the Titanic, Molly Brown. <laughs> but yeah, girl on the boat, boat sinks. That's what happens. <laughs> Woman goes on boat. Boat goes in water. Ship sinks. Ship goes into water. Woman goes on ship. Ship go into water. Then ship goes to the bottom of the water. Was Jaws a, a female shark then? I don't know. Was Jaws a female shark or a male well, shark? The name of the shark was Bruce. I don't know too many female Bruce's. Yes, but it was also a giant animatronic shark, so I think that it doesn't really <laughs> Did you just assume it's gender, Richard? How dare I you? I think I think you did. I think I did too. I was trying to turn it around. Yeah. Maybe the shark wants to be called Caitlin. Maybe. I wonder what the shark surgery would be like. I wonder if that's covered under any medical stuff. It's a pre-existing condition. I'm a shark! <laughs> I'm sorry, shark, but you're a male shark. Uh, you were born this way. How dare you, sir? Yeah. Yom, nom, nom, nom. Bring me the next doctor. <laughs> I say we let him go. Female. <laughs> As a lady. Who's a sexy shark lady? I am. Japan's legendary ninjas are famous for their stealth. Wait, I didn't think ninjas were in Japan. I thought they were samurai. Aren't they different? 
No, they're both in they're both in Japan. Japan oh. had samurai and ninjas. Ninjas were like the Kmart's of the ninja clans, right? Like samurai were like JC Penney's. Huh? I I don't know the shopping uh, hierarchy. Like <laughs> samurais were great. So you want to say that samurais are like Tiffany's and ninjas are Walmart? Yeah, that'll work. No, no. You sure about that? Samurais, samurais, samurais are like Tiffany's, and ninjas are like the people that go into Tiffany's and steal shit, <laughs> and then <laughs> kill the cashier. But I thought so. Like I thought the samurais were the ones like if they did if they failed their mission, they had to perform bukkake and kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I read that somewhere. What do you read? It's Wait, but... seppuku. <laughs> Well, I was reading this fan fiction thing, and it said something about these samurais who failed their mission, and he had to perform bukkake. And all the samurais were dudes. <laughs> well, I don't. Yeah, there's no female. I, I think that's where I think. Wait, this let is me like... look up female bukkake and see what comes no, no, up. No, don't do that. No, oh no, God, no. Richard, something's happening well, to my special place. Lost John for the rest of the show. Okay, so I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna. That's possible. No, we're one to one now. Okay, so Japan's I'm doing it live, doing it live, doing it solo. Japan's legendary ninjas are famous for their stealth and said to possess a supernatural gift for invisibility. But now, martial arts experts, what? It actually says it's supernatural. I thought it was just skill. Well, they're saying like, "Oh my god, it's so good. It's almost supernatural." Oh, so it's almost like Dean and Sam Winchester, but not quite. Right. Because they're from the TV show Supernatural. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it. I get it. Oh, you didn't pulling, laugh. <laughs> pulling it, yeah, you're pulling at straws. That's why. Japan's... Uh, but, but now martial arts experts are concerned they might be disappearing in real life. Do-do-do! Well, is there like a ninja school? Are they going to explain this? Is there like a ninja school out there where you go? Oh, like, hey. God, that'd be so awesome. You know where they had a ninja school? You only live twice. My favorite Bond movie. Oh, did they really? Yeah, that's what. So, so they uh. They have free so, tuition. <laughs> so funny. Well, you had to catch them to pay the bill. They're like, "Oh, you can't see me. I can't pay." Ninja vanish. Yeah. Toga, Raza! attack. Uh babies. <laughs> They're babies. <laughs> um, mama. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they had ninja schools back in the day. I would assume they had ninja schools back in the day. My thing is like, how how did ninjas work? What were the organ? How did ninjas work back in the day? Did like, cause in, cause with the samurai, you had like clans of samurai. It was like families and I like think you the, had clans you know, and ninjas too. Like the turtles. Did they? That's, yeah, that's what they kind of talk about the turtles. But I thought ninjas were like seen as like dirty, you know, like uh, killers, and so like. You didn't want people to know you were a ninja. I, I think, weren't samurai, like, government, like, soldiers? The samurais, I think, were government soldiers, and ninjas were, like, assassins. Well, well, because it was feudal, it was feudalism in Japan. So, like, think of samurais like knights. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they were part of the yeah. actual, like, government part of it. Yeah, ninjas were more mercenaries. From my oh, quick be awesome. Wikipedia search. See... I see more and more. I want to be a ninja. Yeah. I God. Can... Well, awesome. I wonder, Badass. So who was stronger, ninja or samurai? Well, who was better? Who would win? Well, I mean, I think that's that's kind of an age old question. Who would win in a fight, ninjas or samurai? I think that, you know, it just depends. But now, OK, so martial arts experts are concerned they might be disappearing in real life as practitioners of the ancient art of nujitsu, ninjutsu say there is a major talent shortage. As tourism in Japan has grown, there's been an increasing demand to see the iconic warriors perform ninja shows to crowds. Uh, this sounds like the uh, late 1900s, like, come see the Wild West show. We've got Sitting Bull. <laughs> Watch as he gives up to the white man. Annie Oakley. Watch as she shoots the engines. Ho oh, ho, we don't like them brown people. Um, but martial arts squads are struggling to find candidates who are up to scratch. So is it so I'm wondering if they're saying there's a talent if, if like people are applying and they just suck like that's what like that's what happens is like guys like you and me show up and we're like we want to be ninjas <laughs> and they're like okay jump over this bar 
<laughs> Do a front flip, just fall forward. <laughs> Thunk. I don't think he has what it takes. Wait. Um. Wait. Watch this. <laughs> Let me use my ninja sword that I brought from home. <laughs> Ow! Ow! I cut my hand. I didn't know it was sharp. It's yeah. It's that. That's what the problem is. It's it's not that. It's not that people are like, I don't want to be a fucking ninja. Because who doesn't want to be a ninja? Everybody wants to be a ninja. Yeah, I saw a recent video. Like, so you know, like there's like big work, like big workout crazes. Where like, oh my gosh, do this. You know, specific aerobics. That's like so many yeah. things. They like actually the Bukaki workout? Yeah, the Bukaki workout. It's like double-handed, and like it's like you're dodging stuff all over the place. It's like dodgeball, but with sperm. Yeah, dancing between raindrops. It's or like, in this it's case, like, cum drops. <laughs> it's like dancing with the stars, except the stars are... Semen. Semen. It's not pirates. No. But they have like this... Like I saw this video, and I, like, I got super excited. It's these people with like actual swords. Okay. And they're doing like these like martial arts... You know, like sword gestures and stuff, but just by themselves. You know, like they're just like doing the the things and doing flips right. and stuff. It looks super badass. It looks like Darth Maul, like you know when he does his thing. The guy that plays Darth yeah, Maul. Yeah, yeah, Ray Parks. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, that looks so cool. Like I'd love to, like you know, go in the park and start doing that, and somebody calls the police. <laughs> you know, I actually did. I had a sword, and I did get the police called on me once when I was a kid. Really? Like, what kind of sword? Oh, actually, I got a good story about something else. So could okay, with this. so uh, so when I was like, oh, shit, how old was I? I was probably like 14, like 13, 14. And like, I was just like, oh, I'm going to go out and uh, no, I was probably like 12 or 13. I was like, oh, I'm going to go out and play. So I take the sword with I take the sword with me because I got one like I bought it myself. Was it a real sword or uh, like real ish or no, it was a uh, it was a uh, it was made out of rattan which looks like bamboo except it's oh, okay. not hollow okay yeah yeah. and yeah, i had sure it about. and i had it taped up and i had it taped up with duct tape why well, did like masking tape and then duct tape on it and then put electric tape on it to mark like where the blades were or whatever yeah so it's like a training sword kind of, yeah kind of so i go out and um there was, was uh your, was this for your larping or yes or just, okay yes so i go out to like about a block, block and a half away from my house, um, there was a uh, a <laughs> furniture there store. There was an elementary school. No, there was like a strip mall, like a block, block and a half away from my house. And back behind it was just like open grass field, like an op- like an open grass field, like just like empty, like dirt with you know s- shit on it. Yeah. And um and so I go out there and like I walk down there and I'm out there like just like hitting plants and shit like that and like just doing whatever fucking cop fucking cop car pulls up what like scenes were you playing through your head while you're destroying these uh, uh it was probably scenes from star wars because that was all i had okay. when it came to when it came to or or big trouble in little china that was all i had when really when it came to sword combat maybe conan the barbarian mm-hmm. yeah i wasn't sure if it'd be that because i know you liked highlander a lot too so i don't know if oh liked, yeah I the highlander. only one yeah richard died oh Daniel my god Ryan. i've been jamming lately i've been jamming out to the soundtrack to that movie queen did that whole soundtrack <laughs> oh yeah was uh freddie mercury alive still then yeah when did freddie mercury die 88 90 2009 no not 2009 <laughs> like mid eight mid late 80s and Highlander came out in like 81, 82. So I'm out there and I'm swinging stuff. And like, there's like, you know, cars parked back there, like the employees of whatever strip, you know, strip mall, whatever. Uh, the, in the strip mall, there was like a furniture store. There was a like a video store. And I don't remember what else. But anyway, so I'm out there and I'm swinging. And this cop car pulls up and they they get out of the car and they're like, they're like, Hey, sir. And I turn around I'm like me and they're like, yeah, can you come here? And so like I have it in my hand and like I'm walking over there. And as I walk over there, no joke, no joke. They put their hands like on their hips. Oh, I don't blame them. I mean, crazy kid walking up with a sword. Whatever. I'm a 14 year old white kid. They're not going to shoot me. Well, I mean, you come running at them. They would. Well, I didn't come running at them. I walked nonchalantly towards them. Cause I didn't know what they wanted. You're like, do, 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 do. 
So, so they uh, I start walking up there. They put their they put their hands on their hips, and like that freaks me out. So like I stop. <laughs> but you're like, if you're gonna put your hand on your hip, I'll put my hand on my hip. They're like, drop the weapon, and I'm like, I I hold it up to my face. I'm like this, and they're like, and then they like kind of like flinch a bit and i'm like whoa 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 i'm like okay let's put okay it's down and they're like what are you doing out here i'm like i'm just hit, hitting plants i'm a i'm a highlander <laughs> there, there can be all there could be only one you know fight fighting darth vader like oh this kid got out of the loony bin so like i'm out there there is nobody aside from me and these two officers <laughs> there is nobody out there there's nobody okay like, do you, do you have any friends, kid? No. And they said somebody called and was, like, gesturing a weapon in a threatening manner or whatever. I'm like, okay, well, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm like a 13-year-old kid. I'm out here, like, just swinging a stick. Like, it's the equivalent of, like, getting a stick and, like, swinging a stick around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And so they're like, well, where do you live? I'm like, I live, like, a block away over... Down, down that way they cuffed me sean they cuffed they me really they put handcuffs on me behind your back they were like yeah huh. they're like well, we're gonna take you home you need to put these on i'm like what why 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 and then they, they started to get pissy with me so they cuffed me put me in the back of the car and drive me a block home now like i'm flipping out at this point not because, like, I don't give, like, not because of the cops. Like, I don't give a shit about the cops. What freaked me out was my dad, like, whenever, whenever, co whenever police were involved, whenever there were, there were, whenever I did something that warranted police involvement. How often did you get police involvement on you? Like, not very often. Well, like, not very often, like, more than two. Less than five times. Really? Yeah. You so, troublemaker. So anyway, so whenever that happened, that's when dad would like, like mom was a yeller, you know, mom. I don't know how, I don't know how the way discipline in your house works, but mom was a yeller and mom would constantly just like, wah, 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 like about every, like she'd be pissed about everything. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so mom was, mom was a yeller. Dad, dad was the complete opposite. Dad was very quiet and measured, and he would just say things like he would just talk. But there were times where you could see like you could see him like seething with anger. And like you'd sit there and go like this man is actually like restraining himself, <laughs> just <laughs> hauling off and beating the shit out of me. If I get an arm's length of dad, he's going to clock me right in the mouth. Right, right. But I'll tell you what, when uh when if there were police involved that's that's when he that's that's when that's when dad blew his stack and that's when like shit got real you know that's why i was like oh i fucked up so that was my that was my thought i'm sitting in the back of this police car i'm like dad's gonna fucking kill me but, and he didn't do anything wrong though right so like you were even like you well just... yeah but i didn't i mean who the fuck knows like i'm like i'm 12 years old what the hell do i know about you know, fucking city ordinances and whatever. You were 14, you were 13, now you're 12. You're a Highlander, you're fighting Darth Vader. I honestly don't remember. I honestly do not remember how old I was. I want to say 13. Okay. Maybe 14. You were like, you're either right in teen or preteen. Like, you're yes, 12 yeah. or 14. And so they pull up to my house, they get me out of the car, and they take me, they like take me to the door and they uncuff me when they get to the door. You were cuffed so my, all the way to the door? Yeah. So Jeez. my mom, so my mom answers the door. Dad wasn't home. Mom answers the door and like, they're like, does this your son? Blah, 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 you know, like that whole spiel. And like, mom like instantly like looks at me like, oh, you son of a bitch. What did you do? <laughs> like, and I'm I like, I just, I'm looking down at the ground and she tells me just to go upstairs. And so, like, I go upstairs and I'm fucking like flipping my shit. I'm like, Dad's gonna come home, and like he's the scene gonna from a Christmas story. It is. I'm like, my father's gonna come home, and he is gonna just beat the ever loving shit out of me because they're because I got handcuffed and I got taken home. 
I guess what I didn't know is that after I went upstairs, my mom was like, why the hell did you handcuff him and bring him home? Like, he's outside swinging a stick. Was there, did they have an explanation or they're just like, meh? No, they were just like, oh, we got a call for, say that someone had a weapon. And she's like, it's a stick, basically. Did you get your stick back? I did get my stick back. I still have that stick somewhere. But, uh, got my stick back and... Like, I'm flipping out, and, like, Mom opens the door to my room, and I'm sitting there, and she could tell I'm, like, losing it. She's like, what is the matter? I was like, Dad's gonna kill me. And <laughs> she's like, why? You, you were, like, it's fine. And I was like, but there were police. And she's like, oh, well, don't, don't, it's, it's fine. Like, I, she could tell I was, like, seriously freaked out. But Dad came home, and everything was fine. So it was a good ending of the story, but... Being a ninja is hard work. It is hard work. I especially failed at being a ninja because I wasn't, I didn't hide. That well, was my problem. Especially when you're a confused ninja, you're like, am I, a, am I a Highlander ninja? Am I a Darth Vader ninja? That also taught me a very valuable lesson, which is um, don't stop for police. Just run. Oh, yeah. Or run at them. That would have been a great idea. No, not run at them. Just run away. Oh. Run away. So... What I should have done is they should have gotten out of the car, looked at me, like gotten my attention, and I would have looked at them and then just ran away. That's that what I should have done. Though, if you're running that forward, wouldn't have like been worse. Sword. They couldn't have. I was 13 years old. There's no way they could have caught me. I don't know. We may not be doing this show if you did that. I could have outran them. I could have outran them. I know I could have. So, so that reminds no, like me. I, and like I said before, there's no way they're shooting a 14 year old white kid. Uh, I don't know. It will, could happen. Uh, but that reminded me of a story. So when I was like six, um, my mom worked at McDonald's and she worked the early shift. Okay. So she would get up like at four and five in the morning, you know, take me and my sister to my grandma's. My grandma lived like 10 minutes away, like down a gravel road mm -hmm. off to the side, you know, way, ways away. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things like we get up in the morning, mom be like, hey, grab a toy or two and take it with you. Well, I had this, you know, fake pop gun, right? Like a okay. little, little bitty shotgun for a kid. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to take this. Well, like a cap gun, like those old school cap guns where like it had like a little bit of black powder and like and like a hammer hit it. No, this was more like a spring like pop. So it didn't shoot okay. anything. It had like a orange tip and like you would cock it like a like a Remington rifle kind of thing. Oh, OK, so you OK. Cock it, it would pull the spring back. You pull the trigger, it pops. But it didn't send anything, it just made a little pop sound. I see. So I had that with me, and I was sitting in the back seat, and I'm like five or six. Like, I am like completely oblivious to what's going on. I was probably even Oh, uh, wait, than are you five or are you six? I feel like we should clarify this. I might here. have actually been younger because I don't think oh, I was. Oh, maybe in you were yet. younger. Oh, so maybe you're four. Maybe you're 18 months. Who knows? Who gives an 18 month a gun like that, Richard, you silly goose? <laughs> no, but so I'm sitting in the back seat with it, and all of a sudden, like, there's. I, I had to have been at least three. So I was probably really, really young because I, I remember this fairly vividly, but not enough that like I, there was concern. Like also, I like, got we're, you. We're on our way to grandma's. There's like some lights in the background, like police lights. And my mom pulls over to the side, and I just remember this from the recollection of like her kind of telling me this story. Because all of a sudden I'm sitting there, I'm like I'm tired, I'm ready to get to grandma's. I'm like, why is mom stopping? Mm -hmm. Why is mom getting out of the car? And she reaches in and grabs my toy. I'm like, why is mom taking my toy? Ah. Oh. Why? What'd you do? So, what happened, Richard, is as my mom's driving 10 minutes away from her house, apparently I'm, like, waving this around in the back seat, uh -huh. and a cop sees that, and is like, what the hell's going on here? So he pulls her over on this back country road. Are you fucking kidding me? Gets out of his car, and this is, like, 1990. So this is, like, and this is, like... You know, where we're from is like country road stuff like that. Like, right. This was back in the time, I think, when you could have your gun sitting like in the back seat of your vehicle. And I was like, hey, yeah, yeah, there. yeah, I know what you mean. So what happened is, is he pulled my mom over, had his door open, had the spotlight on her and was going through the speaker, had his gun pulled on her. Oh, shit. Was telling her to get out of the car, had her put her hands on the thing. He's like, take the weapon out of the vehicle. And like, mom's like, there's, there's no weapons. It's like, who's in the back seat? She's like, it's my kids. Yeah. And basically, like, it, it finally clicks. She's like, it's my, it's my kid's toy gun. It's, it's a toy. Yeah. And so I don't know how, like, 
like that like i that had to be like a super freaking stressful moment for her right because she's like look at the toy gun oh. yeah exactly Bang. and so like i'm sure like she's trying to grab it. i'm like it's my no it's my gun I'm going to shoot you, Mom. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> this thing works! So apparently, like, he got it all figured out. And, like, I don't even remember if he apologized. Or basically, he probably, like, yelled at her, like, never have that out. Oh, my God. If I was your mom, I would have been so pissed off. Well, so my grandpa, so her uncle was on the police force. Or it was, like, a sheriff of the county or something. Uh-huh. I just know that, like, he was super, like, like, my mom's dad was super pissed. And I know he went to figure out who the cop was, and uh, I don't know what happened after that. Like, that's actually a story that you've just brought back oh. to memory. I'd kind of, like, They probably figure. took him out and shot him. Maybe. Maybe. Your toy gun is the reason that somebody's kids don't have a father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's almost the reason I didn't have a mom. Oh. Oh. But, yeah, that reminded me of that story. That's Which crazy. Yeah, it's scary stuff. It's always and even now, like whenever you get pulled over by a cop, like I'm always super nervous. You always afraid they're gonna pull a gun out on you. Well, I mean, like they don't know, and if you do something like too quick, like like hey, license registration, you're like okay, and you pop open the glove department, and you turn to your back to them, they're like department. Yeah, they're like uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't move so quickly. Oh, dude. There was one time I got pulled over. Amanda and I got pulled over, and uh, she put her makeup bag in the in the glove box. And they were like, "Was that a bomb?" And she's like, "What?" I, uh, yeah, they thought it was like it, that. She, she had some sort of illicit device, and she's like, "It's a makeup bag." Like I get the, the I get the whole like ever vigilant thing, but there's some things that I just like. Come on. That's I don't know. Like I mean, you're just a, you're like in the, in some cases you're just fucking with me just to fuck with me, and I uh, appreciate. I mean, I'm sure there is to an extent, but that's a job where like saying is that a bomb? That's kind of weird. But yeah. like you don't like I wouldn't want that job, and especially I mean it's a, a super thankless job too. Like if you're the if you're the like the good cop kind of guy, like you're doing everything right, you know, you pull somebody over, like you don't know what's going on there. No, I get what you're saying. And it's tough, too, because, like, whenever I get pulled over, even if I'm not doing anything, I get super nervous. Like, I'm thinking of all the things that, like, it's like, are there drugs in the backseat? No, I don't I do not do drugs. I'm fine. Am I drunk? <laughs> am I drunk right now? Am I high? They come over. It's like, oh, sir, are you high? It's like, I don't know if I, I had a poppy not. seed muffin. <laughs> what? I had a poppy seed muffin. <laughs> I'm poppy sorry. Seed, I had poppy seed dressing on my salad. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh, uh, tell my kids I love them. <laughs> Take me to jail. I'm a bad person. I I hope I know how to heal people with my hands. Ninjas, Richard. <laughs> so, ninjas. Ninjas. Okay. Taksugu Aoki, the manager of a martial arts squad in the city of Naoga in the south country, in the south of the country, said... With the number of foreign tourists visiting Japan on the increase, the value of ninja as tourism content has increased. There are more employment choices. While ninja shows across the country have become popular, I feel there is a ninja shortage. So there's no ninjas, no ninjas, no. No, no. ninjas, no ninjas. See, no. that's a good point. No. They no. could come no. over here no. and they could just... Because like, cause I remember I was a kid, my first concert, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a bunch of guys and. Turtle suits being yeah. ninjas. Why couldn't they get those guys? Well, you would think there'd be a huge like push for people to be ninjas. Like they have people dressed as ninja turtles that go to malls all the time, and they're like, "Oh, Leonardo's at the mall." And yeah, but I, I wonder what like you should have like a generation of kids who want to be ninjas, right? Like, I, like I'm sure when Ninja Turtles came out, karate just like enrollment went through the roof. I'm a I I'm an adult and I want to be a ninja. Yeah, it's a lot of work though. Like I have I know people that do jujitsu. And I was like, you should do it. I'm like, uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> looks so hard. Yeah, looks like it hurts. Right? Plus, if you're a ninja, I bet you gotta do, like, all that parkour shit. Yeah, no. That's probably what it is. Parkour probably ruined the ninjas. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that. What happens if I slip? So if a ninja came to present time, a ninja comes to present time, and then he's like, who makes cement walls? They didn't have these then. Fuck. I got jump on these. Yeah, you should just stand on these and throw, like, stand on trees and throw throwing stars. 
And they watch Assassin's Creed and they're like, that, no, nobody does that. Nobody can do that. If you fall from that height and spin and fall on that hay, you're going to break your back. That's fucking crazy. Uh, there are more employment choices while ninja shows. Oh, okay. I said that. <laughs> There's not much money in ninjing anymore. Those who do put themselves forwards, he said, lack the basic skills needed. This usually means being trained in unarmed combat, acrobatics, concealment, and first aid, while also being able to use throwing stars and fight with swords. I've heard that throwing stars actually weren't thrown. They were more for stabby stuff. So you just pull it out and you're like, stab, stab, stab. Yeah, yeah, for close quarter type stuff. I can see that. That makes sense. Um, But I mean, okay, so unarmed combat, like, I get that, like, I think I think that if I put if I gave it my all, if they told me, OK, so if I show up, so Sean, if you and I show up at, at ninja school, what do we wear in our first day in ninja school? Um, I'm going to wear a shirt that says definitely not a ninja. Mm. And then I'm going to say this is my camouflage. And then I'm also going to be like, look, I'm a pasty white guy. So no one is going to suspect me whatsoever. I think I would come in with like a really bad like Ninja Turtle Halloween costume. <laughs> you have a sock that you cut holes in <laughs> wrapped around your head. Got a sack lunch and a turtle lunch box. Okay, so I have Richard and Sean wanting to be ninjas. No, call me Leonardo. <laughs> Leo for short. When's the pizza break? <laughs> You don't look like a rat. I want a new teacher. <laughs> I thought it said, it said authentic ninja training. This isn't any of the ninja training I've ever seen. Yeah. Where's your book? Just give me the book. I'll read the book. Yeah. Cliff notes. But I'm saying like, okay, if they, if they brought me in and said, we're going to train you in unarmed combat, you got to bust your ass and learn how to fight unarmed. But, if you do, if you learn that, if you work really hard and learn that, at the end of it, we're going to call you an official ninja. If they told me that, if they were like, if all you have to do is learn unarmed combat, I'd go for it. Because at the end, they're like, you're a ninja. And I'm like, I'm a ninja. I think that's a tough thing now is probably any of those schools that exist today are pretty much like you have to pay to be a ninja. Like there's no like apprenticeship for it's like hey you come here we'll train you and you'll become a professional ninja yeah you can take a test what would the ninja test be i don't know it'd be tough to like, like, oh well, i got my i got my ninja certification well the ninja test is you just have to find the test and then you pass okay so unarmed combat i think i could handle unarmed combat like i i don't know i'm not that great at unarmed combat now but i think if they told me we're gonna train you and if you do it then we'll call you a ninja like i could do that Okay, acrobatics. This is where I feel like I would have I would have problems. Yeah, you gotta do some spinny jumping around. Yeah, and I just don't know. I don't know if I have the. I I know I know for a fact <laughs> I don't have the physicality. So you and I are in the act of acrobatic session, and like you're trying to do a like a back or like a forward flip, and like you get halfway up, and I try to grab your legs, and they fall. Like <laughs> ah, uh, uh. teamwork, Richard. Song. <laughs> Let's start with trust falls. Radical, dude. <laughs> Funk. <laughs> Pizza break. <laughs> um, he's always saying da na 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 na. Yeah, I'd be like, can we, can we skip acrobatics? Cause <laughs> can we skip ac acrobatics and get new partners? I'm this, cause that's not happening. Like for parkour, like I might be able to jump over like a wall. I could do like a Dukes of Hazard slide over a car hood. That's about that's about as far as I could go. The heights thing would scare me. Like you, you see those guys jump across like you know six foot alley type things and like hold on to the other side. Have you ever tried to pull yourself up on something? It's not easy. Yeah, no, it's not. You see it in movies all the time. Somebody falls off a cliff, but then they grab it with one hand. And they're like sitting there and like, ah, ah, and then they get the other hand up there and then they slowly pull themselves up. No, no, I call bullshit because that's hard as shit. That's hard as fuck. There's no way I would die. I would fall off a cliff and I'd be dead. If by some miracle you're able to jump across this alley and grab onto the other side. Yeah, you're not going to pull yourself up. You're going to be stuck there until your hands bleed and you fall to your death. 
to now, my like, death, like Butch Cassidy. Yeah. And okay. And Concealment. Now, I think since I failed in acrobatics, I'm going to have to put in extra time and effort on concealment. They're like, I can't flip over this wall, but I'll hide really well. But how do you hide really well, though? I mean, that's usually like camouflage. I don't know. Don't you just you put your hands over your face and you just go, you can't see me. Where'd you go? I can't see you. You can't see me. Where'd you go, Richard? I don't, see I don't know. Oh, I'm right behind you. Oh, turn not. around. Ah! Ah! Found Crazy. you. Good job. Thank a you. A plus for concealment. <laughs> All right. And first aid, which, you know, I think. After acrobatics training, that would be a necessity. Yeah, good point. Also being able to use throwing stars and fight with swords. I, I got this. I got that. I would totally get that. I think I think that I wouldn't I might not be that great in acrobatics and concealment because I'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna be so good at fighting with these throwing stars and the sword that I'm just gonna kill everybody and then I don't have to hide and I can just walk at a leisurely pace back to my car. But you seem more like a broadswordy type guy. Could you handle like a katana type weapon? Because it's a it's a base essentially a bastard sword. It's hand and a half. So like you just basically like you. But it's lighter. It's quicker. It is lighter and quicker. But your the way you guard is different. You gotta like basically you st- you st- stand to the side and straddle, so that way only half of your body is you know reachable. Like the front half is reachable, but then you put the sword low, almost like you're setting it on your on your kneecap, like just above your knee. And so then you just wave it. You wave it back and forth, and that's how you block. So it's like holding a big penis. I don't know what that's like. Oh. Oh. oh you don't. You I don't do. either. Yeah, I do. I don't. <laughs> well, college, <laughs> college was an interesting experience. <laughs> um invisibility and walk you sword you've sword fighted before like for like when you lost, yes right? i have fought with swords like it seems like that always seems super challenging like because if you get hit once like especially if it's a sharp sword it'd be like ow i'm cut and then all of a sudden you're dead because you're worried about why your hand is bleeding yeah but i mean if you got adrenaline going through you i don't think you're gonna notice unless like somebody like jams a sword in your stomach and then it's at that point, then it's over. Good point. So what were your experiences like when you were fighting with the swords? I know you did that um, a few times. Like, was it just, did you train at all, or did you just kind of jump right in? A little of both. I had, I, I mean, like, the people that were there, like, actually, the, the you know, people that were there, like, learned from somebody who, you know, and they read books and shit like that, and they helped show me things, and it was cool. Fun times. Uh, invisibility and walking on water, despite the folklore, are not part of the job description. What? I'm out. There was a Mythbusters episode where they were trying to figure out how ninjas walked on water, and somebody said it was because they tied these big floaty things to their feet and then mm. ran across the water. That makes sense. Or they put glass down like that one magician dude. Yeah. Chris yeah. Angel. Or Bob Chris Angel, Angel. Or Steve Angel. Whatever his name Steve, is. Steve McQueen. Wait. Yeah. He's like, I can float, but I really can't because I'm a liar. Yeah, so magicians are really fake ninjas. They're lying ninjas. Poser ninjas. Chris Angel, you hear that? We're calling you out. You're a poser ninja. He wears a lot um, of jewelry. Right? There's no way he would could be able to conceal himself. Everything be clinking around. Yeah, and there's no way he can float. There's too much weight. Mm-hmm. Um, although they have developed a reputation as fearsome warriors over the centuries, ninjas were primarily concerned with espionage during their heyday in feudal Japan. They prided themselves first and foremost on their skills in spying and their endurance. Violence was supposedly seen as a last resort. Not for me. You know why? Because I'd be terrible at parkour. So I'm like, I'm just, okay, we need you to go watch it. All right, so you need to climb over this building. And you need to jump over this other building. Stab. <laughs> All right, now what? <laughs> I'll take the elevator. Um, but they were traditionally skilled in using weapons such as shuriken, known as throwing stars in the West, and Fukia and the Fukia blowpipe, which was usually filled with a poison dart. Well, that's easy. Poison dart. Yeah, a little blowgun. So you just get far enough away. You have a decent set of lungs. And you just... 
Yeah, but do you have a decent set of lungs? I mean, you do smoke, so... I could... I I could do it. And shoot you with poison dart. You're like... Man. <laughs> And then you suck in, and then you suck in the dart, and then you're like, shit, no, no way, man. And it just, like, pitters out. <laughs> uh, they first emerged as mercenaries in the 15th century during an era of the Civil War known as the Warring States period, and were recruited to act as spies, raiders, assassins, or even terrorists. Disdained by general society, which was based on a strict hierarchy with the elite samurai class at the top, because they were the warriors. The, they soon formed into, into guilds with their own sets of rules and ranks. These guilds had different types of ninjas, or shinobi, assigned to specific tasks, and they often controlled their own individual territories. <laughs> so we would be the cook ninjas. <laughs> you make us rice. Oh, but we do it secretly, right? Like we do it incognito. Sure, whatever. Damn it. Richard, look, can you see me making rice? Yeah. Damn it. Hey, Let's Richard, see. I made pizza rice. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Cowabunga! <laughs> according, to the, according to the Independent, people visiting the town of uh, Nabari or Iga and Mi Prefecture can undertake a ninja tour where they can train as the deadly assassins once did. From climbing over 20 foot walls to throwing deadly darts known as shuriken, to crossing a river using a length of rope. People are given the chance to test out all their ninja skills, and those who make it through the ninja training are given a graduation certificate. Is this, the, is this just actually like training for the Ninja Warrior Dash, or whatever the heck that thing's called? Oh my god, have you ever watched that? Fucking yeah, it's Ninja crazy. Warrior? There is no way... There is no way I could do that. I could do that shit like the upper arms, like the arm strength and the upper body strength that those people have yeah, the bar thing, like where you have to like jump and then lift the bar up and hook it in. Like, I don't like I would like that. I can't even do a pull up, Richard. So how the hell am I supposed to do that? Oh, my God. No way. It's like they have that. They have that uh, the vertical wall where they just like run up a wall and then grab it like with one hand. And then they pull themselves up. Yeah, it's like the movie thing. It's impossible, but these people do it because... They do it. They do it. Because they're fucking... Because they're robots. They're not real. They're robots. No way. Um, It comes after a boom in inbound tourism caused demand for Ninja Warrior live shows. So is this like they're trying to basically like... So people are coming into this mythical land of Japan... Instead of like wanting to see their great architecture or you know their great ocean views, like we want to see your ninjas. God, I mean that. I mean, but isn't that like so American of us? Like we land in Tokyo and the first thing we're like, show us the ninjas. Well, I'm wondering if that's. Well, it sounds like that's probably not just Americans. I wonder if like people come to the states like we want to see your cowboys. Show us where they are. Ninjutsu can be translated as the art of stealth, but it also means the art of enduring. And ninjas themselves were noted to, for being able to walk long distances without stopping, jumping over seven feet and dislocating joints to escape from small spaces. Oh wow! Oh, I couldn't do the small spaces thing. I'm. I think I got a little claustrophobic. Have you? What? Like, what's the? Does that bother you? At well, all? Like the, well, the, Sean, you're wearing a mask. I mean, isn't <laughs> yeah, that gonna freak point. you? Oh, like, God. They put the ninja mask on you. And you're like, no, take it off, take it off, take it off. <laughs> uh, uh, breathe, Sean, breathe. <laughs> I, could you handle tight spaces? Yeah, I'd be okay. Like how tight? Like have you ever watched the movie The Cave or the Enclave or it's the one with No, the, you're you're thinking of yeah, The Cave. The, no, it's the, the Descent. The Descent, yeah, where yeah. they're crawling in those like those yeah, super yeah, tight yeah. spaces. It, yeah, I could do that. It shit out of me. I don't like where I can't. Well, I pop a lot of my joints, like my fingers and stuff. And when yeah, I'm in yeah. tight spaces like that, I'm like, "Oh, I got to pop my neck and I can't move." Uh they were also skilled at making both poisons and medicines. Yeah. So they're like assassins, but they really consider themselves more like spies. Yeah, that's what I read when we were talking about it at the beginning. So they were like the lower class spies, assassins, and like you said, terrorists. They kind of did all the dirty work during that war. Like the samurai, like you said, they were the warriors. They were the ones that are trained by the elite, you know, hierarchy, wealthy people. 
And these are like the, the redneck bums <laughs> coming <laughs> out. Yeah, you say redneck bums, but these motherfuckers are jumping over walls and shit. I guess bums wasn't the right word to say. It was like this is like the redneck group coming together and you know. Um, okay, so so let's let's talk about let's talk about ninja assassins. The best known cases of assassination attempts involve famous historical figures. Deaths of famous persons have sometimes been attributed to assassination by ninja, but the secretive nature of these scenarios has been difficult to prove. Assassins were often identified as ninja later on, but there's no evidence to prove whether some were specially trained for the task or simply a hired thug. The warlord Oda Nobunaga, Nobunaga's notorious reputation led to several attempts on his life. In 1571, a Koga ninja and sharpshooter by the name of, Sujian, of Sujitani Zinjubo was hired to assassinate was hired to assassinate him using two rifles like like this is back in the day rifles so 1571 so this is like old single shot yeah um he fired two consecutive shots but was unable to afflict mortal injury through the armor so the shots didn't even get through the armor but yeah he's, wearing, just, he's yeah. probably wearing like a samurai armor Oh, Samurai armor does look badass, though. He was caught four years later and put to death by torture. Ah. The ninja was. I imagine that's probably not fun torture. No, probably not. You always hear, like, like you hear that, like, us do torture, and then you hear about, like, like, ancient Chinese torture. Like, that's, like, that's, like, that's, that's, that's like, a, like, a trope and a joke. Be like, ancient Chinese water torture. Ancient Chinese blah, blah, blah. Ancient Japanese torture. Like, the rat, the rat held your stomach and you put a blaze uh, on the thing and it, uh, yeah, starts uh, biting it, you. Yeah. In 1573, Manabe Rukuro, a vassal of Daimo Hatano Kiriharu, attempted to infiltrate a castle and, uh, and uh, attempted to in infiltrate Nobu Nobunaga Nobunaga's castle and assassinate him. However, this also ended in failure, and he was forced to, and the ninja was forced to commit suicide. By Bukaki? After which his body was openly displayed in public. Uh, so, like, he knocked on the door, he's like, pizza delivery! <laughs> Candy gram! It's like, what kind of pizza is it? It's got anchovies. Ah, uh, death by Bukaki! <laughs> death by Bukaki! No! Stab! Not like this. Not like this. Why are you taking pictures? Um, when Nobunaga was inspecting Aiga province, which his army had devastated, a group of three ninjas shot at him with large caliber firearms. The shots flew wide and instead killed seven of his surrounding companions. Fuck. So they came out with shotguns. They're like, Arr! So this is what they're trying to bring back for tourists. Yeah, I mean, doesn't that sound fun? Like, all right, are you the guy that we missed with one of the seven that we hit? Uh, another ninja was sent by Nobunaga to assassinate another, another Daimo, but he ultimately failed. Hiding in the shadow of a tree, he avoided being seen under the moonlight and later concealed himself in a hole he had prepared beforehand, thus escaping capture. So, like, they're talking about assassination, but all I'm hearing about is people that <laughs> failed. So ninjas, failed. Ninjas don't sound like they have a very good reputation. Yeah. The killer ninjas are bad ninjas. They're no Beverly Hill ninjas. Another assassination attempt thwarted. Uh, the ninja thrust a spear through the floorboards to kill someone, but was unsuccessful. He was smoked out of his hiding place by another ninja who was working for the guy. That was uh, the the assassination attempt was on <clears throat> ninjas fighting ninjas. Is there anything worse? Um, he was smoked out of his hiding place by another ninja who apparently used a sort of primitive flamethrower. Unfortunately, the veracity of this account has been clouded by later fictional publications. Oh, here's one. There's a Usugi Kinshin. The famous Daimo of Enchigo province. He was rumored to have been killed by a ninja. The legend credits his death to an assassin 
who is said to have hidden in his bathroom. Oh, that's the worst place. Like, you're getting ready to take a dookie? Yeah. Oh, God, and fatally injured him by thrusting a blade or spear into his anus. Uh. So he was probably, like, hiding behind the <laughs> toilet. He's like, Ninja Strike! <laughs> Sitting there like, man, I've been constipated so bad. Like, I just, oh, oh, oh. Like, he pulls his pants down. He's going to sit on, like, he's back. Like, he's doing, like, the penguin walk. Like, the backwards waddle to get on the toilet. And that's when he's like, ninja strike, stab. Right in the ass. (laughs) I feel like I've won, but I've kind of lost in a way. You come back to your, your camp and. Like, all right, so how was the assassination attempt? Oh, God, it was successful. I killed the shit out of him. Oh, historical records show that he suffered abdominal problems. Modern historians have actually attributed his death to stomach cancer or esophageal cancer. Well, that's not cool. <laughs> it's the it's the long kill. I'm playing the long... You stabbed him in the ass, like, what... No, I'm playing the long game. (laughs) You'll grow old and miserable. Uh, The skills required of the ninja have come to be known in modern times as nujitsu. Ninjutsu. Um, The first specialized training began in mid-15th century. Outside the expected martial arts disciplines, a youth studied survival and scouting techniques, as well as information regarding poisons and explosives. Physical training involved long-distance runs, climbing, stealth methods of walking, and sw- and swimming. So, like, the rice paper walk. Did you ever hear of the rice paper walk? Uh, apparently, the rice paper walk is, like, I guess rice paper, like, tissue paper. Like, people would put tissue paper, and you had to walk across this tissue paper without making it crinkle. Oh, I gotcha. So nobody knew that you were there. Yeah. The explosion like, thing would be fun, though, because you could make those fake smoke bombs where you could throw them and go, Ninja, vanish! Yeah! Like, vanish! <laughs> vanish. <laughs> well, this is this is this this would all fall part in our training to be Batman, Sean. That's true. Well, Batman was trained by ninjas. Hmm. Uh, with the fall of the Aiga and Koga clans, Daimos could no longer recruit professional ninjas and were forced to train their own. Damn amateur ninjas. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I like my pro ninjas. Like, I like when it's like the video quality's great. You know, there's a little bit of acting. It's just top quality. The amateur stuff, you just, you never know. It's just And weird. they get it, and they get it from a book. Yeah. The way it's meant to be. N- the ninja did not always work alone. Teamwork techniques exist. For example, in order to scale a wall, a group of ninja may carry each other on their backs or provide a human platform to assist an individual in reaching greater heights. So that would be us, Sean. <laughs> We'd be like, no, don't call it a piggyback ride. It's a ninja back ride. Hop ninja on. back ride. All right, now climb the now climb this twenty foot wall. Ninjas trot. Da, 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 da. Fuck. Uh, yeah, you'd be like Fezzik in the Princess Bride. Okay, three people. He only got himself. <laughs> so we could be ninjas. Is my point. There, there is a method. Of training for us to be ninjas. First, we were cake. First, like you were like, oh, let see. This is the thing. This is why I am the man in this relationship. Because you're like, oh, look, Richard, we could go to Japan and we could serve ladies cake and take pictures. We could take selfies with them and give them tea and champagne. And then I'm like, or we could go to Japan. We could be fucking ninjas and smoke bomb ninja vanish. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, hey, we could, you know, satisfy these horny Japanese women by serving No, you can't touch them, remember? It said that there's some stuff that isn't documented. But you're like, no, let's go where there's only dudes. And there's hidden secrets. And nobody tells the tale of what happens in the Japanese ninja bathroom. And and, and swords, don't forget the swords. Yeah, sword fighting. Yeah, that's a good point. I I I think I have a good thing going. Being a ninja would be pretty cool. I'd be down for that. It'd be a shit ton of work for sure. Yeah, it would. But if they, like I said, if they told me at the end, they're like, hey, you do all this stuff. If you work really hard and you do all this stuff, at the end, you're a ninja. I'd be like, sign me up. But the curse of that is you probably can't tell anybody. Right. That's the thing. Man, you'd come home and your wife would be like, so Richard, where have you been? Well, I was in Japan being a ninja. Cake boy. (laughs) (laughs) 
What? I was serving <laughs> Japanese women cake and champagne. Where's my cake and champagne? Oh, oh John, damn it. I need a new place to live. <laughs> Ninja <Man. laughs> All right, Richard, so what are your closing thoughts for our ninja training episode? It seems like being a ninja is hard and it's thankless work. But at the end of the day, I would find it to be one of the cooler titles to have, even though you couldn't tell anybody. You know, you know what it's about? Personal pride. That's what it's about. So this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that you should that training for something, even if there isn't a shareable reward, gaining of the knowledge is its own reward. There it is. Whew. All right, well, let me do a little bit of dojo cleaning here. Visit our website. We're at languagebros.com. Follow us on Twitter. We're at languagebro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languagebros.com. We've been getting a lot of emails lately, so keep them coming. Check out the LLB Army Intelligence Reports. Ian Wells presents. He's getting close to 50 blog posts, Richard. 50 blog posts. I know. He gets to 52. That's a year. Yeah. Closing in on the one-year anniversary. So proud. Also, you can like us on Facebook and then go out and recruit somebody for that LB Army by getting someone you know to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or Stitcher. And when you're on iTunes, make sure you leave. You can, you rate us, and that's great, but we would love it if you left a review. We love reviews. Yeah, we've been getting quite Tell a few. us we're good or, or bad. Yeah, I mean, we haven't gotten a one star yet, so. <laughs> do you, do you, <laughs> come on, one star. <laughs> And you can always check us in our home clan, the Pod Bros Network. Oh, that's the best podcast site on the internet, I hear. It's the best dojo clan podcast site network ever created by John. Run by, <laughs> run by ninjas. And if you want to go a little bit further uh, and help us out a little bit more, you can go to our Patreon accounts, www.patreon.com slash language of bromance. All right. We're done shilling. It's time to vanish. All right. Well, nothing else before I close her out. All right. Well, that's all I've for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we eat the beaver. Ninja vanish. <laughs> the babies. <laughs> Caverns and Comedians is a real play Dungeons and Dragons podcast featuring Toronto comedians playing Dungeons and Dragons. We roll the dice, but we edit that out to just give you the nice role playing experience. Featuring acts of heroism. I've got his wallet. I mean, I, I didn't mean to kill him, but he was bad, right? We're pretty sure. Do I have to heal you? I don't want to. Can't you just die? Ooh, a dungeon master! My safe word is potato! Stumbling towards goodness one roll at a time. Caverns and Comedians can be found on iTunes, Google Play, or kicksandgigglesentertainment.com.